If you're a student or a working professional in the United States, you have probably faced the problem where you are not able to earn what the United States expects you to spend, 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 especially if you're a student. And once you actually get into a job and luckily by any chance, if you get an H1B, right, and you're working in a company, they expect you to continue to work in that particular company or at max have only one job at a time. That means anything else that you want to do to produce passive income is restricted. And it seems like there are a lot of restrictions to these visas, right? How do you actually go ahead and make yourself a side income, passive income, while actually staying within the confines of the legalities of the issue at hand? This video is going to be about that. I'm going to be telling you exactly what you can do, what you cannot do. And I'm going to be giving you some ideas on how you can make yourself some extra income. All right, so let's begin. Now, there are two golden rules over here before we begin. Number one is that you should go ahead and follow us on Instagram for more such updates and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like this video because there's more like this coming soon. Number two is that you should not be actively involved in whatever you are doing to earn side income. Basically, your passive income should come from passive sources. You should not be fully engaged in that. And let's actually give you some examples now. First one, YouTube. So remember, if you actively make YouTube videos with monetization on your channel, well, that's banned. You cannot actually do that. But if you make YouTube videos without any monetization, that basically means it's sort of like a hobby anyway, and you're not earning money from it. So that is, however, allowed. You can actually do that, and that's allowed. And you can be a student who's making YouTube videos, and you know you have not monetized your channel, and that's okay. You can increase your subscriber count until then, and later on, maybe when you're outside the US or when when your visa status is such that you can actually you're you're permitted to do it, you can do it. But Usually, as long as you're not monetizing it, it's allowed. What about, um, you know, not monetizing your channel, but accepting other payments, sort of? Well, you know, like sponsorships, maybe some company is sponsoring you to produce an ad on YouTube, right? In between your videos. Is that legal? No, that's also illegal, guys. So you see anywhere where you're actively involving yourself to gain any side income, it's illegal. Hey, how about you've been a YouTuber in your home country and then you come to the United States on one of these visas, what about it then? Can you earn from your previous videos? The answer is yes, you can because you're not actively producing those videos now. Those were produced in the past while your visa status was clear and now you can actually earn from them passively without actually investing your time in it. But what if you want to market those videos and you know maybe just push some views into those to get more, more, more revenue out of it, right? Well, again, you're actively trying to manage something that is simply working passively. So this one is also not allowed. So I hope you get the picture over here. Let's move on and let's apply the same to stocks. Over here, of course, day trading is not allowed. You cannot go ahead and sit down in front of a computer and spend four hours a day trading, right? Swing trading also not allowed. Swing trading means that every one week or two weeks, you're basically buying off loading stocks. Does not look good. Trust me, it's going to cause issues. Sometimes even in a couple of days, swing, swing traders do it two days, three days, holding a stock for a very short period of time. It's not going to be legal. However, when it comes to investing, buying and selling some stocks, you know, maybe you're doing about 15 transactions a year on an average or something. That's okay. In a month, if you're just buying or selling stocks one or two times, that's that's completely fine. Hell, in fact, you can you can go over two times also sometimes. You can go three, four times, but that's okay. But really try to keep it to a bare minimum as much as possible. I'll tell you personally from my experience, most people, they fail at trading. You want to make money in the stock market? You want to keep invested, good stocks, do your research, really, and then move in very confidently and just stay put. That's how you make money. And investing is, by the way, allowed. Okay. What would not be allowed over here, again, is researching stocks for another company, whether that company lies in the United States or outside the US, if this is not related to your program that you studied. So, I mean, if you if you studied finance and then you're doing a job in this field, right, that's completely okay. You can actually you can actually do that. You can you can work in a brokerage firm and you could have a degree for that for it. And you know, that's legally you working on an H1B or on your OPT, and that's fine, really. But if you're doing it, you know, as a side income, trying to make some passive income and you're researching stocks or maybe a company overseas, 
not allowed. Let's talk about real estate. Now, if you want to rent out one room, let's say that you are living in a duplex, you have maybe, you know, or maybe you have like two rooms, you know, one room, you want to stay in one room, it's just lying there, you know, and maybe you're paying rent for it, maybe you're not, maybe it's someone's apartment that, you know, they, they gave it to you. What you want to do is you want to rent it out. Well, that's okay. The other room can be rented out and that's fine. It's not a lot of work. Till this point, it is okay. However, when you're renting out multiple units and you're managing them, basically, you know, you have to do a lot of things when you manage units. Maybe the plumbing has gone bad today or something is going wrong today. You have to do that. You have to do this. You have to do this. There's a lot of tasks, right? When you're, when you're a landlord, sort of. So if you're managing and renting multiple properties, well, that's not it. You can't do it. It's not allowed because that is then active income instead of passive income. Well, what if you are buying and selling properties for a profit? Is that allowed? No, that's also not allowed. You cannot go ahead and trade properties again and again, because that again makes it more of an active income. All right. But if you want to do something like that, you have multiple units at hand or you want to, you know, find good deals and you want to invest, you want to go out, you know, something like that. That's actually possible if you use a real estate firm, if you use the property management firm, who's going to be doing all of this for you, renting your properties, managing the property or finding your deals and then investing your money for you and then, you know, selling the property for a profit. If they're doing all of that for you, that is legal. That is allowed because you're not doing anything. You're paying them a part of it. Definitely. They, they probably earn a percentage, but the money is yours and you earn the rest passively without actually being involved. Let's talk about Amazon FBA number four. Very easy to detect over here. I think by now you have mastered the golden rule and you know that Amazon FBA is something that requires a full time commitment. Not allowed. Let's talk about Airbnb or short term rentals next. Well, it's similar. If you're managing the property yourself, it is not allowed. However, if someone is managing the property for you and they're earning some money out of it, that's okay. You're paying them and they're doing the hard part of the work. That's a passive income. That's okay. That is allowed. Finally, a lot of students ask this because it's uh, well, in some countries it is sort of legal as well. But well, in the US, if you want to drive an Uber or a Lyft and maybe, you know, you're really great at driving or something as well, either. I know a lot of you guys come to me with this. It's not allowed because you're investing your actual time on a daily basis on this activity, right? Like I said, before you go, please post your comments in the description, subscribe to the channel so that I can help you understand exactly how to move forward with these. Remember, you can always go to an attorney with this and they would have much more knowledge in this field. But based on my understanding, my knowledge, I'm more than happy to help you over here. Again, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Instagram, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye and take care. Bye.